When I first started developing my game, I wanted to make something like Stardew Valley mixed with Skyrim, you know, something where you have these NPCs, villages, all handcrafted and individual, with a big open world that had a lot of dungeons and enemies and things for you to explore. And I'm just one guy. So that sounds insane, right? I made a bunch of prototypes of small pieces of my map, but I never went around to actually sculpt the final version of a map that I wanted to have for my game. That is because I always felt like I could change something on the map. So if I had like a tree, I always felt like I could go back and change the tree that I made to a better one. And that always made me backtrack on my terrains and I had to make new terrains because I felt like the ones that I had wasn't good enough. All of that changed after I played Valheim. Valheim was a game that I played with a friend and the whole experience was amazing. Now don't get me wrong, I played a lot of Minecraft back in the day and I have an idea of how procedural generation works in games, but now I was seeing the game with the eyes of a developer instead of just a regular player. And I started to realize that the whole Valheim experience is not that big in terms of assets. For example, in the first biome you have stuff like deer, those little green guys on the water, and then those little annoying green guys that come in your house, and then the trolls that sometimes can destroy your house. Then just these four mobs, they get spawned all over the procedurally generated map and you get a lot of mileage out of them. So even without many assets and character models, they can get a lot of mileage out of the whole content and the experience can last a lot longer and the player will be able to have a lot more fun with the game, I think. The keyword here is mileage. Because I'm a solo developer, this would mean that my content that I produce would be a lot more meatier, and the player would be able to enjoy it for much longer if I started thinking about it procedurally generated. So instead of making one individual NPC that is handcrafted and has its own clothing and all of the quirks of the character and stuff that is completely individual to him, I could instead make a lot of pieces of clothing and then make a system that generates procedural characters in a procedural village that the player can enjoy for much longer. Instead of making one dungeon that takes me like 3 months to make and the player can burn through the content in 5 minutes, I can make a procedural generation system for dungeons where the player will be able to enjoy it infinitely and I can use a pool of assets that the player will always see but it's going to be procedurally generated enough where it is fun and engaging for much longer than if I just made one dungeon. So now you must be wondering, how does one make procedural generation inside of Unreal Engine? Well, you can do it using Voxel plugin, which is a plugin on the Unreal Marketplace. It uses voxels, which from my understanding is something kind of similar to how Minecraft generates its worlds. and from that, you can have your own graphs with your own generation logic and you can make biomes, you can have different topological maps and curves for each single biome that you have with different foliages for each one. And honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's stuff like planets that you can have and you can destroy the different terrain that you have. You can even have cave generation. I'm gonna put a link to the plugin website on the description if you wanna check it out. So here is what my voxel graph looks like. Here I'm able to set the parameters for each biome and the topological curve each one is going to have. So it is something where you receive a value and then it passes onto a curve and you can have from minus one which would be underwater to zero which is water level and one which would be mountains. So here are my biomes. You have the grasslands which is preferably the place where the player would start which consists of lush green forests with a couple of trees that makes this kind of colorful environment. You also have the mech biome which is inside of the dragon and this biome consists of mostly mechanisms and just mechanical trees and mechanical stuff in general. I plan on having mechanical mobs like a mechanical animal here and there so that you can farm for ingredients and stuff. The tundra biome will have more mountains and it's going to have a little bit less rivers and it's going to be a more mountainous region in general. The Steam Mesa will have those big canyons that are very flat and almost artificial looking. The wetlands will be this swamp area with a lot of very shallow rivers. The Brass Desert will have dunes and deserty kind of stuff. And all of that just using float curves to filter out each biome. So each one of the biomes is going to have their own vegetation and foliage, ranging from mechanical trees to blueberry bushes. 
Some biomes like the Brass Desert or the Wandering Dragon will have a lot more steampunk elements like enemies and the dungeons and caves and much more. You can see that trees on the dragon don't really have leaves, it's just a bunch of thin metal that mimic this forest environment. In the future, I'm going to re-implement the ability to cut down trees, which is something that I had before, but because I changed the terrain and the vegetation system, I'm going to have to replug that code that is already there. So it's pretty much built already, I just gotta go there and reconnect stuff. So this time around, I also wanted to focus a lot more on adding more variety for each biome, so stuff like those small plants and flowers and things like that to make the biome actually feel like it is a natural thing with a bunch of varying types of foliages. And the only downside that I found with this plugin is kind of a lack of documentation. Sure, you have the website, but that is very, very basic, so that it just teaches you how to make the very, very bare minimum of like a terrain. But if you want to make something like biomes, then the website is not going to help you at all. So. The good news here is that you have a lot of voxel graphs that are kind of examples that you can use to understand how it works and to kind of um, use that on your project. One big breakthrough that I had is that I found this amazing tutorial that goes over how to make these different biomes using curves. And this tutorial was kind of the big thing that I used to make most of my voxel graph. So if you guys want to know what I did, you can just go there and it's pretty much explained step by step what I did. You guys remember the idea of the dragon that I had? Well, it's pretty much done, I think. The whole dragon model is done and the animations are done. So here it is. The high concept for this is that it's going to be the starting zone for the game, linking the story and the player origins. This wandering mechanical dragon houses one of the dog breeds present in the game, think something like mecha gnomes from WoW. In the future, I want to make body modifications for my character customization pool, like arms and legs, which would be heavily featured in this area. So the story would be that this special dog lived isolated from the outside world in this village, and you are the son of a great explorer that mysteriously left on his blip and never came back. The game would then start with your character learning the ropes to become a great explorer. Then building a blip, using components scavenged through the tutorial section and going to adventure on the outside world. This starting section would also serve as a very good vertical slice to what the game is going to be like once you leave the tutorial section of the Wandering Dragon. And then I can use this solid framework that I'm building right now to expand on the overworld. At the start of the year, I kind of felt like I rebooted the game from scratch, remaking the player character and doing a bunch of reworks that were much needed on my systems. But now I feel like I'm finally going forward with the project and I have a ton more stuff to show you guys. Stuff like character customization, procedural dungeon and village generation. And my dogs are here, hang on. So um, if you guys wanna know, this is Nutella. The new combat system that I made that I focused on being more fluid with a bunch of awesome combos, procedural dungeon generator that you would see on a game like Binding of Isaac, sound design and how I'm developing the game with sound in mind on every single mechanic that I make from now on, and much more. So stay tuned, subscribe for more videos like this one, leave a like if you like this video, I'm Leo, signing off.